Good morning. Today is Sunday, the 10th of October, and it's the 28th Sunday of the Church's year. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. First reading is from the Book of Wisdom, chapter 7. I prayed, and understanding was given me. I entreated, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I esteemed her more than scepters and thrones. Compared with her, I held riches as nothing. I reckon no priceless stone to be her peer, for compared with her, all gold is a pinch of sand, and beside her, silver ranks as mud. I loved her more than health or beauty, preferred her to the light, since her radiance never sleeps. In her company all good things came to me, at her hands riches not to be numbered. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 4. The word of God is something alive and active. It cuts like a double-edged sword, but more finely. It can slip through the place where the soul is divided from the spirit, or joints from the marrow can judge the secret emotions and thoughts. No created thing can hide from him. Everything is uncovered and open to the eyes of the one to whom we must give account of ourselves. The Word of the Lord. The Gospel is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10. Jesus was setting out on a journey when a man ran up, knelt before him and put this question to him. Good Master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You must not kill, you must not commit adultery, you must not steal, you must not bring false witness, you must not defraud. Honour your father and your mother. And he said to him, Master, I have kept all these things from my earliest days. Jesus looked steadily at him and loved him, and he said, There is one thing you lack. Go and sell everything you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. But his face fell at these words, and he went away sad, for he was a man of great wealth. Jesus looked round and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were astounded by these words, but Jesus insisted. My children, he said to them, How hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. They were more astonished than ever. In that case, they said to one another, Who can be saved? Jesus gazed at them. For men, he said, it's impossible, but not for God, because everything is possible for God. Jesus took this up. What about us? he asked him. We have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, I tell you, solemnly, there is no one who has left house, brothers, sisters, father, children, or land for my sake, and for the sake of the gospel, who will not be repaid a hundred times over, houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and land, not without persecutions, now in this present time, and in the world to come, eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. In a sense, all today's readings are about wisdom. Wisdom is something that in the closing time of the Old Testament, the Book of Wisdom was probably written less than a hundred years before the time of Jesus. Wisdom had two aspects. It was what you might call worldly wisdom, how to cope with life, even from a religious point of view, how to make decisions that fitted the situation one was in, how to make decisions that took account of the actual uh, parameters of one's own circumstances. But it also had a deeper level that wisdom was an aspect of God and the more one studies wisdom and then sees how it develops into the New Testament, one realises that wisdom is the spirit of God himself. In fact, Paul Christ calls Christ the wisdom of God in a number of places. So that the wisdom is both the work of the Holy Spirit 
but it's personified in Christ himself. He is our wisdom. So when the second reading talks about how the scriptures get to the heart of the matter, they cut through the innermost thoughts and deepest desires that we have, there's a sense in which it's the openness to the real me that wisdom comes, approaches. And of course that is the person of Christ. So there is a sense in which we both pray for wisdom and we pray to wisdom. Wisdom being the person of Christ. And in many of the other texts in the Old Testament we hear about wisdom was actually at the beginning of creation. And it's often been said by scripture scholars if the word wisdom in Greek, Sophia, um, wasn't feminine John might have rewritten the opening to his gospel. Remember, currently it's in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It could have been written, in the beginning was the wisdom, and the wisdom was God, and the Word, and the wisdom was God. So what do today's readings call us to do? They call us to lead a life of prayer, so that we can slowly make wisdom, in both senses, the heart of our lives. And Jesus gives a very concrete example to the apostles when they say to him, we've given up everything. You know, you give the story of the young man who couldn't find it too difficult to give up his riches so that he could take on deeper wisdom. Um, it's always one of the great stories of the man who walked away from Jesus because he couldn't uh, give up on his wealth. Um, but the apostles have promised that they will receive a reward of a hundredfold for what they've given up in this life. Built into this is a whole philosophy of life. It's not meant to be one of, shall we say, giving up everything that's nice or fun or good. What Jesus is saying, your heart must be on him, on the kingdom of God, on following reality, that we are all creatures, it is God who made us. And by living that life where one sees oneself in right relationship with God, trying to carry out his commands, trying to carry out our desire to imitate Christ in the way he lived in this world, we then are following the path of wisdom. It's when we try and put trust in things that are untrustworthy. And over and over, the whole point is that no matter how rich you are, it doesn't count for a penny when you die because you can't take it with you. So look to see what goes beyond this world to the next and leading a good life following the path of wisdom is the heart of the wise move. That's how to live a happy life in this world and be ready for the next. We turn to our bidding prayers. We praise you, O God, and we acknowledge you to be the Lord. To the only God our Saviour, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion and authority before all time, now and forever. We praise you, O God, we acknowledge you to be the Lord. We bless you, Lord, creator of the universe. We were sinners in need of your grace, yet now you have called us to live in knowledge and service of you. We praise you, O God, and we acknowledge you to be the Lord. Your Son has shown us the way. As we follow in his steps, May we never wander from the path that leads to life. We praise you, O God. We acknowledge you to be the Lord. We celebrate today the resurrection of your Son. In suffering and in gladness, may it bring us deep joy. We praise you, O God, and we acknowledge you to be the Lord. O Lord, give us the spirit of prayer and praise. Let us always and everywhere give you thanks. We praise you, O God, and we acknowledge you to be the Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord God, open our hearts to your grace. Let it go before us and be with us, that we may always be intent upon doing your will. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Have a good day. Have a good week.